Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mark Seraphim, and I'm a partner engineer on PyTorch at Facebook. Uh, and I'm here to, to talk to you today about our, our new mobile demo apps. So at this point, we have a couple of interesting demos, like, it's like, like the, the demo apps are, are far reaching in scope. And you know, we have examples in image segmentation with DeepLab v, v3, object detection with YOLO v5, a translation example with Ferris sequence to sequence model, uh, speech recognition with wave to vec a video classification with PyTorch video, an example we're gonna dive deeper into today. Digit recognition with a vision transformer, a text classification as a hello world example with a vanilla LSTM, question answering with uh, with one of hugging face transformer models and image classification uh, again with torch vision but before we get so yeah so so so, so i thought like i'd give you like this overview but really today what i want to do is like dive deep into showing you how the video example works but regardless of the kind of model mobile model that you work with there's sort of really four steps whenever you're doing anything with pytorch mobile so the first step is you download some form of pre-trained model, or maybe you train your own. Uh, so you don't really need domain expertise in machine learning to actually use a model in, in an app that, or, or an experience that you're building. The second step is you wanna pre-process your input data in some way so that PyTorch Mobile can understand it. So turn everything into a tensor, make an inference. That's the easy part, right? It's like you're calling your, your forward function or your classify function. And the last step is post-processing. So basically taking the output of PyTorch's inferences and rendering them onto your UI. So yeah, so, so uh, I guess like enough talking. Let me just, like sh actually show you how this all works for PyTorch video in, in Xcode. So at a high level, you, you can think of like the, the, the model that you're working with is gonna be a, a binary file, like a PT file. So we're gonna be loading, we're gonna be loading the file here, but we're also gonna be loading uh, the list of possible classes that a classification can have. And really the experience that we're trying to build is this. So, so this, is, this is a simulator. And as an example here, we have uh, someone who's doing like a high jump or pole vaulting. There's another example of, of this person uh, weightlifting. Uh, and then this example of this kind of you know, annoying person like giving or receiving an award, you know, moving their hands around, maybe they're playing the clarinet or even playing the trombone. So, so maybe it figured, maybe here it thought like okay well you know giving or receiving a word that, that that seems close right like the person was talking, uh, playing the clarinet and playing the trombone is a bit weirder maybe it's like the person's voice or the way they're moving their hands but really the kinds of classifications that this can give is limited by the kinds of classes that are available here, so if you want to base if you want to support more use cases you would again need to update this and retrain and fine tune your model but for now let's assume that a pre trained model works just fine. So, so how will this work, right? So you have this model and really every, like all, all of the magic and, and th those like three steps are happening here. So um, we're basically gonna make like classification on a pixel buffer. Uh, and then after making this classification, we're gonna post process this data and visualize it in the UI as that text that you saw at the very top. So what's up with this complicated part here? Well, this is pre-processing your data and it'll make a lot more sense if I, so, so, so there's sort of two things to keep in mind here. The first is that when we're classifying video, it's a lot easier to take patches of videos together, like multiple frames concatenate them. And that way, like our algorithm can, can, can tell a bit more, like it's like movement can only be determined if there's multiple images. You can't tell if something's moving from one or you know in which way it's moving, for example. And the second thing that we need to do uh, is basically just do the generic pre-processing tricks that you would see with any sort of image model, which is one, resizing your images to have a fixed uh, height and width. And then the second part is normalizing the pixel intensities. That way, large pixel values aren't gonna change the output of a classification too much. So this is very clear. If you look at this constants file here, like we'll see the, the input width, the input height, and then the number, uh, the number of frames, and also the top count. Well, because well, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna say, you know, give me the top five most likely inferences, and then I can render those five in the UI, but you know, this could be 10 or one or just whatever you want, depending on your experience. Um, right, so here, for example, you see here, like when we're looking at the result, it's gonna be the top five uh, indices here uh, from this classification. And let's just take a quicker look at how this works, right? So this part here, uh, where is it? Classify frames here. 
So what we're really gonna do here with this classify frames, like, we're, like so we're, we're gonna give our function uh, four frames and then we're gonna ask it for the most likely scores. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the scores uh, and then we're gonna, so here, so, so, so one, we're, we're gonna get the output and then we're gonna just keep track of the five top most scores and return them. And that's really pretty much the only thing you need to keep in mind. Uh, one last thing is, well, you may ask, like, well, why do we need all of this? And why are we writing Objective-C, right, in a, in a project that seems like almost entirely like it's Swift? Well, the reason is because we're using LibTorch. And LibTorch is actually a PyTorch, but PyTorch is actually a C++ library with a, with a Python front end. Um, and so just to be able to call C++ code from within an iOS app, like we need to resort to, the, to this. And really the way to make this work is you just essentially need to come in here. Here, I'll just show you these instructions very quickly. Okay. So here, when we're going to the, these instructions, like the only things you really need to do to set this project up is set up a virtual environment, which is a very common thing that you do with most Python projects. Uh, activate the environment, like install Torch Vision so that we can do stuff with the, with, the, with the image frames. Install PyTorch Video so that we can have a video classifier. You build the model. And then this, what this pod install will do is install LibTorch for you. Uh, and then you just open up the workspace. And that's pretty much it. Um, Android is very similar, and it's actually even simpler because we don't have this sort of dual language problem. So just to quickly show you what I'm talking about, uh, remember, so over, so over over in the iOS code, well, we had a classify function, but here instead we're just going to call it uh, forward. You know, it's really the same thing. Uh, and we're going to take some input tensor, and then from this input tensor, we're going to get a bunch of scores back. We're going to keep track of the top five like the top length most scores uh, and output them and then we can render those in the ui and very similarly here so here we're doing this concatenation trick where we're looking at four frames um, and concatenate them into into a single tensor and doing the normalization the normalization and resizing tricks to make this work uh, and otherwise the code uh, is is pretty much uh, the exact same so this is sort of a at, a, at a very high level, again, like I said, any PyTorch mobile model that you're working with is gonna have a very similar story, like where you download a pre-trained model. Here, I'll show you the steps again. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, here we go. Yeah, so we're gonna download or train some sort of pre-trained model. We're gonna pre-process the, the input data just so that PyTorch can understand it. We're gonna make an inference and then we're gonna post-process that, that inference back into our UI. Uh, one thing uh, like I think it's super important to mention is that like when it comes to doing inferences with models, like most of the time when you're training, it's going to be in 32-bit precision, but you don't need 32 bits of floating point precision for inference. Like in fact, like, you know, many, many, many papers have shown that you can just use like int 8, for example. And so you can quantize your model so that it takes up less space, consumes less battery, uh, you know, lowers data costs, and just generally becomes like a more enjoyable experience for anyone using your app. So after you do that, you can also uh, you, 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 you can also JIT script it, which is also going to add a bunch of additional mobile specific optimizations. And once you have that, you have a PT file, and then you load it like the exact same way that I that I showed you earlier. So if if you're wondering about like what you can what you can do next, like I would highly recommend you take a look at like the the, the blogs and the code. So check out like the the mobile home on pytorch.org. Uh, check out the Android and iOS demos. Like they, they have tons of other examples. Like I just picked video because that's what I was interested in learning about. But I'm sure you can find something else that you're interested in. And this wasn't the first PyTorch mobile video on YouTube on the PyTorch channel. Like there's there's at least five more that I could find. Uh, so make sure to check them out. Uh, and really, you know, if, if you have any any questions about anything, uh, you know, so feel free to reach out to me, email me, uh, shoot me an e shoot shoot me a DM on Twitter. Uh, if you want to discuss with other people or with other PyTorch mobile devs or the core team, feel free to drop a message on the discuss channel. Uh, and if, if as you're using the examples, there's anything uh, you're stuck on or anything would like to learn about or is unclear in the examples, feel free to open up a GitHub issue on either the iOS or Android demos. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of examples and, you know, I really hope you enjoy going through them as much as I did. Thank you, everyone.